chapter 5.2 exercises, in this case, 1 through 8. This section has to do with verifying true metric identities. And so the first problem we have is quantity secant squared theta minus 1 times cosine squared theta equals sine squared theta. And the identities we're going to be using here are first the Pythagorean identities, which are sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. They are equal to 1. Our tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to our second squared theta. And then finally, we have cotangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to our cosecant squared theta. Cosecant squared theta. And what really helps me remember this is the letter association cotangent is goes C, goes with C, cotangent and cosecant. And then we have our quotient identities, which are uh, tangent theta is equal to our sine theta over our cosine theta and cotangent theta is equal to the reciprocal of tangent which is cosine theta over sine theta and then we have our reciprocal identities which are sine theta equals 1 over cosecant theta. We have cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. We have our cosine theta is equal to 1 over secant theta. And we have our secant theta is equal to 1 over cosine theta. And our last pair of reciprocal identities is uh, a tangent theta equals 1 over cotangent theta. And cotangent theta is equal to 1 over our tangent theta. And so for this first one here, uh, we're going to see if we can replace the secant squared theta minus 1. And I'm going to try to do this over here on the left side, or on the, yeah, on the right side right here. If we write our tangent, I, Pythagorean identity, tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. If we subtract 1 from each side of this equation, we see that tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus 1. Okay, you see that? We subtracted 1 from each side of this original identity. And where do we see secant squared theta minus 1? Right here. So we can rewrite secant squared theta minus 1 as tangent squared theta. It's just rewriting this quantity secant squared theta minus 1 and then times cosine squared theta and then we, we're going to eventually, we hope, get the left side to equal the right side. And tangent squared theta, we can take our quotient identity, this one over here, I'm circling in purple, so we're going to go ahead and take sine squared theta over cosine squared theta and we just bring down this cosine squared theta and then uh, we should be able to see that cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta canceled equal 1. So we're left on the left side with sine squared theta and that's going to be equal to this, I'm drawing with the arrow here, this sine squared theta on the right side. So check. And the working out, the working out of the problem for getting credit is showing the steps on the left side until that left side equals that right side. Next odd number problem, three. We have 
sine theta minus sine theta cosine squared theta equals sine cubed theta. Well, what we're going to do is factor out a common factor from each of these two terms on the left side, which that's going to be sine theta. So we have sine theta times what equals sine theta. Well, that's going to be 1. Next, sine theta times what equals sine theta cosine squared theta? Well, that's going to be simply cosine squared theta. Okay, so we've just, we've just rewritten that left side. That's all we've done. And next, if we go back to the Pythagorean identities, that first one, sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta equals 1. If we, um, it should be cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. So if we subtract cosine squared theta from both sides of this equation, Okay, we have a cancellation here on the left side, so we can rewrite as sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. Okay, can you see how this is helpful? We can replace this sine squared theta with, or this 1, 21 minus cosine squared theta with sine squared theta, so we can write sine theta times sine squared theta. And then sine theta times sine squared theta is going to be sine cubed theta. And that's the left side. On the right side, we just bring that down from the right side, sine cubed theta. Check. So problem number three is worked out. Next other problem, five. We have cotangent squared theta cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta equals cotangent to the fourth power theta. Again, look for a common factor. In this case, we have cotangent squared theta. So factoring out cotangent squared theta, we just write out cotangent squared theta times what equals cotangent squared theta cosecant squared theta? Well, it's going to be times cosecant squared theta. And then cotangent squared theta times what equals cotangent squared theta? Well, that's going to be 1. And then we go to our uh, Pythagorean identity, cotangent squared theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta. And subtracting 1 from both sides of this identity, we have cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta minus 1. So we can replace this cosecant squared theta with cotangent squared theta. So now we have cotangent squared theta times cotangent squared theta. And now cotangent squared theta times cotangent squared theta is going to be cotangent to the fourth power theta, which equals what we bring down from the right side with this arrow, cotangent to the fourth power theta. So check. We've got the left side to equal the right side of the identity. We prove its identity. Next on our problem, we have secant theta over sine theta minus sine theta over cosine theta equals cotangent theta. This one's going to be a little bit more involved, quite a bit more involved, because it's going to require more algebraic manipulation. Uh, we're going to go ahead and find a common denominator. That's going to be the main thing. But a lot of times these problems, the way to work them out is if you can change the secants and cosecants into sines and cosines. So secant theta is equal to 1 over cosine theta. And so rewriting this expression on the left side, we rewrite the secant theta as 1 over cosine theta. And that's going to be over 
sine theta minus we have sine theta over cosine theta. Now what we're going to do is we're going to instead of dividing by sine theta we're going to multiply by 1 over sine theta because multiplying uh, dividing by a fraction the same as multiplying by its reciprocal so let's rewrite this as as a 1 over cosine theta times 1 over sine theta and minus sine theta over cosine theta. Okay, and just multiplying cosine and sine together, we have 1 over cosine theta sine theta minus sine theta over cosine theta is equal to, well, the right side. We have, we're just going to continue working on the left side, we hope, until that left side equals that right side. So now we're going to find a common denominator between these two terms. And to do that, we're going to take, for this term on the left side, we're going to take 1 over cosine theta sine theta and we're going to multiply that by cosine theta over cosine theta. And now we're going to subtract out, right now we had just from above, sine theta over cosine theta times, we're going to write uh, cosine theta, sine theta, over cosine theta sine theta. Now a lot of times people working out algebra will kind of gloss over this step and combine these terms, uh, make a common denominator more with, with not making it as stipulated and clear as this. I want to make sure everybody understands how to do this. And so now on the left side what we have is where we multiply these together, so we have 1 over, actually we have cosine theta, because 1 times cosine theta is cosine theta, over, we have cosine squared theta, sine theta, and we have minus, on the right side we have, we have sine squared theta, cosine theta over cosine squared theta sine theta. Okay, now we're going to bring this over here to the upper right over a common denominator. So we have cosine theta minus sine theta, sine squared theta, cosine theta. And that's going to be over, we have cosine squared theta, sine theta. Cosine squared theta, sine theta. Now what we're going to do is replace this sine squared theta, and I'll show you how we're going to do this. I'm going to write this in red. Remember our first Pythagorean identity, we had sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Well, if we subtract uh, cosine squared theta from both sides of this equation, we're going to have sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. Okay, so now making this substitution, we have cosine theta 
minus, and I'm going to make parentheses here to replace with 1 minus cosine squared theta. And that's going to be times cosine theta. And that's going to be over cosine squared theta sine theta. Okay, and then kind of expanding the top, we're going to have cosine theta. Now, we're going to have cosine theta times 1, and that's going to be minus cosine theta. And then we're going to have cosine theta times cosine squared theta, and we have minus minus so this is going to be positive cosine cubed theta. All right, are you following along? I hope you are. Over cosine squared theta sine theta. Okay. Now, uh, we have cosine theta minus cosine theta will cancel each other. So what we have left is cosine cubed theta over cosine squared theta sine theta. Okay. Now, cosine cubed theta over cosine squared theta, it's like multiplying, having in the numerator three cosine thetas on top and two on the bottom. So what we're going to have left here is we're going to have cosine theta over sine theta. And that's going to be equal to, using our quotient identity, cotangent theta is equal to we have cotangent theta. So we've taken this cotangent theta and okay, put it on here. Cotangent theta equals cotangent theta. Check. Okay, quite a bit more involved. Good luck. And there are even other problems with demonstration learning. And thanks for viewing.